Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example, again, is a quite interesting example. We have a cylinder that has an inner radius of A and an outer radius of B, a temperature inside of A and a temperature in outside of B with a length L. This particular cylinder has a variable heat conductivity constant. Well, it's not really a constant, it varies. It is equal to a constant K sub naught times the radius squared. So it does depend on the square of the radius. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the heat flow through the cylinder, not along the length, but from the inside to the outside. So what we're trying to find is uh, find dQ dt, which also can be written as Q dot for short. Q dot really means dQ dt, the derivative of the, of the heat with respect to time, of the heat flow with respect to time. So how do we do that? Well, we need to realize that the amount of heat flowing through the cylinder from inside the outside has to be a constant, even though the cross-sectional area increases as you go from the inside to the outside. So what you can say is that dQ dt, which can be written as Q dot, is a constant, and that's important to remember. So now using the conductivity equation we can say that Q dot, the heat flowing from the inside to the outside, is equal to K times the cross-sectional area times the difference in the temperature divided by the length of the path. Now be careful that this length is not the same as this length, so I'll put little quotation marks around that. So K is going to be this equation right here, so it's going to be some constant times r squared, that's going to be the k, the cross-sectional area. Well, what we're going to do here is take an imaginary cylinder with thickness dr, like this. So let's say that this is a distance r away from the center. The thickness of that is dr, and so that shell of a cylinder is going to represent the cross-sectional area through which the heat has to flow. The heat is going to flow to the small little section from here to here, and so the difference in the temperature from there to there is going to be a dt, a very small change in the temperature flowing from the inside to the outside to that small little cylindrical shell. So the area is going to be the circumference 2 pi r times the length. So it's going to be 2 pi times the radius times the length. And this L here is indeed that's length right there, times the delta T. Well, in this case, it's going to be a dT because it's just going to be a very small change in the temperature through that shell, all divided by the length of the path, which in this case is going to be a dr. So the length of the path from there to there is simply a dr, a very small distance dr. Now we realize that our equation, Q dot being a constant, only has two differentials, dr and dt. So we're going to separate those two. So we can write this as, over here, dr divided by r squared times r, which is r cubed. So we have all the r variables on the left side equals, on the right side, we're going to have a k sub naught times 2 pi times the length, all divided by q dot, that's also constant, times dt. So we've separated the variables. All this is a constant right here. These are all constants. I can now integrate both sides. And notice on the left side, I'm going to integrate from a to b, and on the right side, from temperature a to temperature b, which then allows me to calculate the q dot, which is ultimately what I'm looking for. To integrate this, I'm going to rewrite this equation. We're going to write this as the integral of uh, r to the negative 3 dr from a to b is equal to, in case of not, 2 pi l divided by q dot. Those are all constants times the integral from ta to tb of dt. And now we're ready to integrate both sides. On the left side, this becomes r to the negative 2 divided by the new exponent, negative 2, evaluated from a to b, is equal to, on the right side, we get k sub naught 2 pi l over q dot times t evaluator from ta to tb. Now, plugging in the limits, 
we have one half times of the upper limit would be one over uh, that would be r squared and in this case it would be b squared minus one over a squared is equal to k sub naught two pi l over q dot this is a sub naught right there and this will then be equal to tb minus ta and of course tb is a lower temperature than ta hmm Yeah, that's kind of interesting, Tb minus Ta. That's the delta T. We want that to be a positive quantity, otherwise we get a negative flow, and that doesn't make a lot of sense. I can't forget my negative here, my negative 1 over 2. Now, notice that B is a larger number than A. So 1 over B squared is therefore a smaller number than 1 over A squared, so I'm going to multiply both of these by negative to get rid of negative and reverse those, the order here. So this is 1 half times... 1 over a squared minus 1 over b squared is equal to k sub naught 2 pi l over q dot times tb minus ta. Okay, it still bothers me that that is um, a negative quantity, which kind of it's not what we want. We want that to be a positive quantity. It's the change in the temperature from high to low. And so Ta is a high temperature Tb. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reverse the order from Tb to Ta. From, so this becomes A, B, higher temperature, lower temperature, higher temperature, lower temperature. And here we're going to have this as higher temperature, lower temperature, so that we can see that the heat is flowing from the inside to the outside. Okay, it's just a sign change, and we just want to make sure that we understand the heat flow is going to be from hot to cold. Although that was not described here, the heat flow could be in another direction as well. So finally, I'm going to solve for Q dot. So Q dot is equal to, uh, that would be 2 times 2, which is 4, so that would be K sub naught 4 pi L, divided by the quantity 1 over a squared minus 1 over b squared times the difference in temperature of Ta minus Tb, like that. And that would be a final answer, although we could write this over the same common denominator. We could write that Q dot is equal to K sub naught 4 pi L over. In the denominator, we can have b squared minus a squared, b being bigger than a, that's good, divided the common denominator of b squared times a squared. So I've simply placed these over common denominator times the quantity ta minus tb. And so finally, what we could say is that dq dt, which is equal to q dot, whichever way you like to write better, times, so here we have k sub naught, 4 pi L. I'm going to run out of room. I need a little bit more room, so let me expand this a little bit more. And so I'll just write it as Q dot. Q dot is equal to, we have 4 K sub naught, 4 K sub naught times pi L, pi L times A squared B squared, A squared B squared times the difference in the temperature, Ta minus Tb, all divided by a square, uh, b squared minus a squared, b squared minus a squared. And this could also be a good way to write the final result. So we can either write it like this, or we can write it like that, whichever way you prefer. But at least that shows you the heat traveling through the cylinder is going to be constant and is going to be defined, defined by these particular parameters and that is how it's done.